Okay, so I, I will present what we did uh, one year ago. We released the software in uh, uh, ICME uh, um, uh, workshop in uh, England, London, one year ago in November. And uh, I, I will give you some uh, points about how is the concept of the, this software that is really the concept of every of the software you have uh, VCMIX software you have. So there is some way that Professor Braginski think that it is the best way to represent the mixing. You will see the part of it, okay? And the same kind of concept you will find in turbulent and laminar and more than this, okay? We'll talk about it uh, tomorrow, about turbulent mainly, uh, in order to give an, a very wave idea. Of course, I cannot go deeply to what he's doing, <laughs> as you can see. You can remember it's about 30 years, uh, ten, uh, two books, 100 papers. We have some of them there, and I recommend to read. So I will give you some idea about it, okay? Anyway, we will use some questions here. Be not, be not, be, be not afraid about it. Uh, after 15 minutes, I will uh, uh, start together with you to do the, uh, the training of what you did yesterday. Yesterday was very interesting. Wanted to put in the situation that you don't know nothing, and you will start with the software, okay? It was a very good pilot in order to feel what someone feel when start to work with the software, okay? Now we'll give you some uh, more explanation of how, how, to, how to do it, how to manage the software, okay? We'll do it together. I installed the software in most of the, of the computers here, so we'll do it together, okay? Okay, so let's start. Uh, so we'll talk about the uh, introduction, we talk mainly about what is the mathematical models we have there. Some applications, the application of customer support that will not uh, uh, enter on it. Uh, uh, the authors of these two examples are here in the room. So one of them is uh, Matt, that three years ago did a very good job about uh, emulsification. You can ask him, it was very interesting. And a second job was to use the high shear energy in order to do a, a work in a very fast reaction, um, amino acid uh, reaction, in order to avoid isomerization of D and L, okay? So all of them is here, you can ask them. It's very interesting and we will do it may maybe tomorrow, we'll talk about it more. But uh, the more important thing is, okay, all of the company, we want, don't want to talk about it. Uh, uh, Victor, of course, you remember, Victor, this is the, the book. <laughs> it is you. <laughs> Uh, and the customers, all of this we know. Okay, I want to talk about uh, a little about the uh, uh, VCMIX mathematical model for emulsification. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I want to dis discuss about what is the limitations or no limitation, what is the assumption we do. Okay, because it is uh, one of the main important message you emphasize during the first and this uh, day. Take an account when you have a con correlation, you have to take an account what is the limitation of it. Okay, BCMix is some way to do, so you have to know at least what is there, okay? Maybe a little. No, we don't have all the, the numerical methods to explain. No, but a little what was the concept. In order to take in consideration this kind of thing and manage the model better, when you have something that is outside the limits of the, 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 the default of the software, okay? And we did, the Ray did a very good job in this way to the, to the morning something that it is not in the default. But you can get results. Yesterday, if you remember well, when you used the RSDE, it was some limitation about the dimensions of the window, okay? So you manage one of these groups, manage it well, okay? Did some assumption, and in this way they get the drop size and so on, it was very good. It is the, the idea, <laughs> the, the geometry can be infinite. So how to manage what we, what we have and the software we have and the knowledge that it is a best, a good knowledge. Okay, so rotor state, do you know what it's exactly? Is? It's a, some device that uh, is running very high velocity in the center or outside, and we have another part that is static. The distance between the rotor part and the stator part is very, very uh, uh, short, very small, and for this reason, you have very high shear rate, okay? It's normally one. When you are running, running in this high velocity, what happens is the, you are creating some vacuum here, so low pressure here. So the, the flow it will enter until the end of the, of the actual side, uh, 
part, and after that, you want to exit through these uh, windows. And when it exits through these windows, you have to pass this small paste, uh, part, so the meaning of this, you have high shear. Okay? This is the, what we are doing. What is the, the advantage of this is that you are uh, break a big part of, par of fluids in small parts. Okay? And you can do two stage, three stage, and different kinds of configurations. Okay? It's according to what, what you want to do. Uh, with rotor stator disperser emulsification, we add the capability to calculate the, mo uh, the main drop size, the drop size distribution, the emulsification, uh, the dynamics, so how long it will take in order to get the uh, particle size, where, uh, the drop size we're looking for. And it is in addition to the uh, uh, previous version, that in ver this version we were able to, cal sorry, to calculate the shear rate, this, uh, the uh, specific power, the pumping capacity, and after that, the time required to uh, get different kinds of homogeneity levels. Okay? Um, uh, uh, and of course, more we uh, include in the, uh, in the uh, emulsification uh, package a capability to, uh, um, to uh, install the rotor stator in different points in the reactor, in a recycle, or in an in inline. Okay, we don't need the vessel. We have the inline. We put a rotor, a rotor there. We have a pipe, and the pipe uh, feed the data to the rotor stator and release it. Okay, inline uh, operation. All of this we did. So this is all the operation that spoke, spoke about it. This in inside in the reactor from the top, from the bottom, uh, as a recycle and in the inline. Anyway, okay. This is that was the implementation. Some uh, 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 main ideas about the model. The first is uh, uh, the main side. Oops, sorry, the essence of the approach consists in describing the main size of the drop format in different flow conditions as a function of the average value of turbulence energy dissipation rate in the flow vessel. Why? Because we know that the energy of dissipation will do some kind of shear, okay? And it will uh, 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 generate some kind of break of the fluid, okay? Uh, why we talk about average, it's some of the solution we are doing. It is not completely average one point, it's the average around some point, okay? So if we have high energy of dissipation close to the imperial and a lower energy of dissipation in the bulk, we will continue to use these numbers, okay? Uh, a real, uh, yes, a real uh, uh, progress could be achieved uh, yeah, by analyzing the kinetics of breaking and Collins droplets. So, so we take in account that we have different kinds of mechanisms. We have the mechanism of break, okay, of uh, breaking, and we have the mechanism of coilings. And there are two different mechanisms that are competing together, okay? We want to break, we want to coilings, so we have to manage with both of them, and all of them will be function of the conditions in the reactor, or will be function of the, let's say, energy of dissipation of the system. Okay? We have to manage all of them together. Okay? Um, uh, this model, uh, the implementation of this model, is in Vsimix turbulent. If you go to Vsimix turbulent and you go calculate liquid liquid, the model we use is exactly the same model. The develop was what will happen when we have really high shear rate? You know, the normal shear rate in the turbulent system is about 100 or below that, okay? When we talk about high shear rate, we, we, we talk about 1,000, 100,000, something, or more than this, okay? And maybe the, the extrapolation will, will be not so clear, okay? So for this reason, <laughs> Professor Roginski, what he did is uh, to evaluate again, to take samples, to put in the microscope, to, de to see what happened in different conditions, try to understand what was the collision and what was the break, the breakage of the drop we have. Okay. Uh, so yes. Um, okay. Um, uh, the the research was the follow. The task is to is limited to simple modeling of kinetics of simultaneous breaking and coolant droplets in the range of diameters corresponding to Kolmogorov uh, no viscosus range of linear microscale turbulence. The meaning of this we talk about uh, until the level of Kolmogorov uh, uh, range. Okay, below that, my uh, nanotechnology, we don't know, okay? We know that it is happening in uh, sterile vessels, okay? But we don't talk about it. We don't know, maybe it will work. We don't know really, okay? A second, the, oops. 
here. The mixing was assumed to be perfect. Oh, surprise. Why? Okay, let's, let's, let's talk what is perfect uh, to Professor Braginsky, okay? It is not the perfect what we think, okay? Uh, all the all position of the drop in the tank were assumed to be equally probable, okay? No, the energy of dispersion is homogeneous, no. In the position that the drop is there, we have the same probability to happen something, breakage or collision, okay? We'll talk about it after that. And the distribution of the drop side and concentration of the dispersed phase were considered uniform, okay? This that we have, this is some assumption. We have to take it and continue to this to know what has happened there, okay? And the system, <laughs> and the system was assumed to be monodirpes, so dispersed. The meaning of this, we don't have multi-dispersion, okay? We talk about one drop, and it is, okay? Maybe there are many there, but we talk about one, okay? Okay, so what we need to, to, to solve is this question. What is the, uh, the change of the diameter of the drop as a function of the shear rate when we have two main mechanisms, the collision and the breakage? Okay, this is what we have to solve. In order to do it, we need to know what is the hydrodynamic, we need to know that what is the explanation of every one of these functions, that is the probability of a, a collision and the probability of breakage. Um, uh, uh, three functions, this has explained before that, will uh, manage the, the uh, uh, diameter of the, of the drop. Okay, from here to the end, what we have is uh, considerations about what was the main or the more important model that we, uh, Professor Raginsky used in order to define what will be the critical velocity in order to get the deformation and breakage of the, uh, of the drop, okay? He used this one, Okay, if you, uh, let me explain about it a little. Uh, if you want to describe uh, the uh, behavior of the, um, uh, of the uh, turbulence systems, okay, if you want to know what is the velocity as a function of the time, and you put a sensor in your reactor, in your turbulence system, even in the atmosphere, what will be the graph we will get? Velocity as a function of the time. What we'll have, it will be no smooth, it will be you, some nervous people, yes? Yeah? Okay. okay, this is uh, something that it is, uh, uh, you can tell that it's deterministic, not deterministic, I don't I put inside me, uh, myself in this kind of discussion, but it is difficult to predict, okay? What we do normally in turbulence uh, models is that we have some, uh, 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 some, uh, uh, Average as a function of the time, and after that, some deviation, okay? From deviation, you see? Some deviation, okay? This deviation will be B prime, and you know that V will be B average plus B prime, okay? Okay? It's clear? Now, the B, we, we are very, uh, very uh, busy to find what will be the best B prime will describe the process, okay? And in the solid, uh, solid distribution, when we take uh, material from the bottom, you explained it yesterday, Victor explained it yesterday, and uh, in the breakup, the main important thing is the fluctuation of the velocity, okay? So this will be, we'll have some critical velocity that will break out the flow, the, the, the drop, okay? So we're looking for it. This is one of the ways that Professor Raginsky take in account. I don't know exactly why and what is the reason that he ex uh, uh, used exactly this, but he take in account, he take in account the uh, surface tension, he take in account the dif difference uh, density by the viscosities, he take in account the energy of dissipation and so on, okay? Um, uh, we will need more, we'll need a, a linear scale destroying pulsation, okay, what will be the length that will have the destroying dis a pulsation, okay? It's close to the uh, uh, mixing length of Prandtl uh, uh, distance, okay? And in through into this uh, range, we will have a probability that we have a breakup of the, of the, of the drop. And after that, we need uh, to, uh, to take into account what is the possibility that under this situation, when we'll have velocity higher than the velocity that will, case the, will, uh, will uh, uh, give us the breakage, it will happen, okay? That it is the number of the, 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 um, the, the n is the function that will strike the breakage of the drop, okay? 
Uh, the same history will be the coalition, okay? Again, frequency times the deficiency of the coalition. And here we have to take into account some consideration. The first is two droplets approach each other and collide. And the efficient collision, we need some efficient collision, okay? Some collision will not generate the, the columns, okay? So we need some efficiency of it. So the efficient collision, the amplitude of the fluctuations, you remember these fluctuations, so the fluctuation we have, the amplitude of the fluctuation is high enough to overcome the resistance of the liquid field between two drops, okay? We have two drops together, okay? We have two, uh, let's say, walls, okay? That we have to have enough energy to put them together and to break this drop. Okay, these two walls, okay? This we have to take in account. So the necessary condition of columns of two droplets may thus be assumed to consist in their being in contact as the fluctuation occurs. The contact here means that the distance between the drop centers is practically equal to the drop diameter. When we have this condition, the meaning of this, we have now a one new drop, okay? This is that we talk about it. We have we talk about the we have to talk about what is the velocity again that is critical for this, and we take in account some pressure that will fill two uh, drops together in order to collide and give a new uh, drop. Okay, so this is the function that this is the main frequency times the relative frequency that we will have enough energy to do the col the the col coalescence and the probability that will exist will happen. Okay, some results about it. If you're looking for, for instance, what will be the, uh, the influence of the energy of dissipation in the, dimension, in the dimension of the drops, you will have different kind of, uh, you know, it is log-log, okay? This is logarithmic uh, representation, okay? So the power that you will have is, is close to the power, is close about 0 0.4, that is close to the uh, power you will have in the, uh, 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 in the models that I described in the, in the literature. Okay. Okay. Now, the examples I will not show. You can ask Matt. <laughs> okay. It is very interesting. We'll talk maybe tomorrow about it. And by the end, it's not related exactly the emulsification, but it's related the the um, uh, the high energy of dissipation. You can ask Yossi. Okay. It's another kind of work that's very, very interesting how the high shear rate will influence the result of the process. Some kind that uh, may be a new way to think about, okay, we have a reaction. Maybe we can apply more than we used to apply in the energies in order to get better results, okay? Okay, right now, what we'll do, if you can do it with me, you have in your folder the, yes, this, well, I am in this in a boss, yeah? and I'm doing my jogging today, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm preparing myself, yeah. Yes, I'm here now, yeah. The, the question I have is, these various models that uh, Professor Brzezinski put in this Visimix uh, tool, how do they compare with models that have been published elsewhere? Yes. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to show some comparisons to some of these models published by Tavlaridis and co, uh, Professor Calabrese and all those people and see. Yeah, I, I didn't need it. I didn't, I didn't did, but one of the, you remember three, day, three years ago, Matt did this kind of job and in, this, in the website of BCMix, you can find a file that it is selecting uh, verification of software. There we take some papers of liquid liquid and compare. In, in our website. Okay. But of course, we have to generate more, I think. Well, those kinds of comparisons is what generates uh, in, I mean, confidence. confidence in the tool and so on. Okay. I agree with you. Okay. Okay, any other question? <laughs> Moshe, please. Okay, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, put it here. Okay, so please open the, the software. You have RSDE, you have in the folder this example. We'll run it together, uh, more uh, uh, um, organized than yesterday, <laughs> okay? I will try to see what, what this is, okay? Only to give you some idea how to operate the software.
Ok. Eh. So it is the software you can see RSD E. Okay, you remember yesterday? And uh, if you can see, it's the same desktop that you can find in other software in VCMix, so no, not really something new. So please go with me. In order to open every time uh, the, uh, the new project in VCMix, you have to go to project and click new. So do it with me, project and new, and you will be able to uh, generate a name of the, uh, of the uh, project. Only the name, okay? After that, you need to save. It happens that sometimes we get some question and the file is with no data. So I will, uh, the name will be test, okay? And you can save every, uh, when, in every place you want. Uh, you can click uh, save and now we start. So what we have here, we have at the beginning to define some main configuration of the RSD, okay? So you see here uh, blade, and stator, and you can see blade and stator, uh, stator and rotor. Okay, see the, this is the shaft, this is the st uh, blade, this is the rotor, and it is the stator, or can be opposite. Okay, you see here we have a rotor, and here we have two stators. Okay, different kind of configuration: one stage, two stage, three stage. We have another one. You see it. To disk, okay? Because sometimes we use use this in order to generate high shear rate, okay? So in our example, you can see in the first page, you can see that we will select the uh, simple one, the blade uh, stator that it was the rotor stator that yesterday, the vinaigrette. When we click here again, the same kind of way you have here your choice. You have to click OK in order to be sure that you select it. And now in our example, we have to fit some uh, initial data. I used, in, in my practice, but everyone will use what, what you want, uh, I used to fit the maximum one, okay? Because I know that this is the maximum. More than this, it's not possible to me. I have to do something else. But everyone can do in his way, okay? In this example, we'll use 1,500 RPM. Uh, the external diameter, uh, the external diameter, we work in, in millimeters, so I know that here is inch, but <laughs> okay, I, <laughs> if I do it my inch, I will be smaller than I'm, I am, so <laughs> it will be, a <laughs> okay. Now, you see, the external diameter is 190. The uh, internal diameter of the stator is 191, so you see that the distance between the stator and the rotor is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 millimeter, and the external diameter will be 200, it's according to the example, okay? Now we we'll click OK. You see that we have here a picture, the meaning of this, we fit the configuration, okay? Now, it's dependent that we want to calculate what will be the other data we will require. Okay? And it is normally in VCVIX that you fit only the main data required from the beginning. And after that, in order to progress with the calculation, maybe you will need more data. Maybe not. Okay? So let's progress. We want, as you see, we want to calculate the <laughs> emulsification. So this is the reason that I'm doing this uh, work now. So you have batch emulsification, and you see you can do a main drop size, distribution of the drop size, a non-emulsification fraction. And you can do it the same in the continuous, OK? And you have the inline, you can do the same, OK? So let's do with the batch. It's a normal one we're using. And we want to calculate the drop size. So click drop size, immediately VCVIX will ask, okay, you want drop size? Let's go and collect more data, okay? We need to collect the data, relevant for it. Okay, and we have in the next page uh, that, uh, okay, <laughs> you have your media, please. Fit some average, uh, in our case will be water, this is one, uh, uh, 1,000 kilogram per cube meter. We will we'll use now Newtonian, but you see we can use non-Newtonian media and it will be a good results again. So click OK when we have Newtonian media and the viscosity that we have is one, okay? What we are doing now is doing some kind of uh, emulsification of very, very low uh, concentration of the organic material, okay? 
We can change. It can be high concentration. It's not a problem. It can be high viscosity. It's not a problem. Very, very high viscosity. We can do in a laminar way, continue to be valid the process, okay? And the way in the instructions of the, of the software, in the user guide, you will see what was the limit, but this limit is very, very wide, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, no. We will need. We will need after that the uh, separate every one of the liquids. Okay. Now we do some average. Okay. So but yes, yeah. this is the media. You don't know what happened there. You know that you have a liquid there, and you want to know what is the density and the viscosity. It is a pro for the pur purpose of calculation of power. Okay. After that, you want to know what is the drop size. We will require separate every one of them. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's progress. Uh, we click one centipoise. Take in account no one Pascal time seconds, please. Uh, the difference is very very high, and we have a very no good history with this kind of uh, numbers. Some companies that try to do uh, hydrogenation, and they click instead two centipoise, two Pascal time seconds. <laughs> okay. Is it honey? Yeah, honey. <laughs> okay, click OK. And now we, win, we need to describe more the, 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 the equipment. So the stator, the stator type, according to our example, will be slot. Okay, you see we have different kinds of uh, uh, stator, so we will use the slot one. Okay, this is this one. You see the picture here. The meaning of this is you select that you want it. We click OK, and now it is in inch. Okay, and now we will uh, uh, fit the data in millimeters. So it is uh, 32. The internal AI 36. The external I. The number of slot will be uh, 40. The I of the uh, yes in millimeter. Please change to millimeter if you don't have it in millimeter. It will be 30 true, and the uh, width of the of the window here is one. Okay, and now uh, you see you, you can see here all the dimensions here, so it is not and the reference. So is, if you click something that it is not uh, rational, for instance, I will click 320. What will happen? It will uh, change. Okay, it will change all again to different numbers. What is the meaning uh, if you if you want to know if we change something it is underlined okay okay so let's again to feed the correct data okay 36 okay now we please click okay and now we need the number of blades in our case is three blades and the eye of the blade is uh, uh, 32 it is my family no 32 and now we click okay and now we have to decide which kind of configuration we can use. Of course, you can select one and after that to compare to the second one, to the third one. You can open four different projects in the same desktop. Okay? So you can compare all together in the same and after that send to some report or to Excel and to do the sensibility, sensibility analysis. In our case, we are doing it from the bottom. So we are using this one. So you have this one. And when we click OK, we need to uh, use the, what we are doing here. We suppose that you are installing your rotor stator in some equipment that you are mixing before that, okay? And the reason is that we, want, we believe that when you will apply at the, at the beginning some flow, you are getting some kind of mixing, okay? After that, you will, uh, you will use the local high shear rate in order to improve what you are doing, okay? Is that what we assume? Anyway, uh, it was the second question yesterday. What will happen if we don't have a mixer there? Okay? So it is outside the default world. One, uh, uh, one thing will, one uh, option will be, okay, I don't know, I close the software and it is all. But uh, normally we want to succeed and to use our uh, mind. So for instance, we can click zero. We can use the pump, uh, flow pump of, of the rotor stator, okay? We can find a way to define what it will be the mixing time in these conditions, okay? So try to, to think about it when you are using the software, okay? In our case, it's simple. We have it, and uh, we have uh, 750 uh, milliliter, uh, milliliter in our uh, 
media, the number of blades, it is how many stage, okay? Number of blades is one number of impellers. One impeller, maybe we can have another impeller here, another impeller here, okay? We talk about one impeller. In our example, it can be two, three, four, five, what you want. The mixing time, of course, we advise to calculate, uh, to calculate with the software because the model was developed, it is important to say, the model was developed, but we take in account the flow pattern. Okay, when we look at in the top, we take in account what is the flow pattern passing through the rotor stator in different positions. Okay, so the mixing pa the mixing uh, time that we require in order to use the software is according to the models of physics. Okay, of course you will use different kind of uh, mixing power, or mixing time. It, it will be generate some results. You have to take in consideration this fact. Yes. Yes, yes, it's connected. I, I really have to ask this question to Professor Braginski. I don't know exactly what is the, the answer, okay? Write me, okay, thank you. And uh, uh, the mixing time we calculated was 68 seconds and we did it with turbulent. Now we can click okay. And now we require what will be pro the process duration. The process duration, let's say, will be in our case, 40 minutes, so change it in minutes. Okay, and now you can click, okay. Okay, what happened now? Okay, now I understand you want to calculate, uh, you want to calculate uh, drop size, yes? So if you want to calculate drop size, we need a separation between the two phases, okay? Everyone will be different, and after that we will mix together and we'll get the drop. So it is that happened here. This window is exactly the same window you have in Turbulent, okay? It is the new one, okay? So let's uh, feed the data there. We have, uh, in our example, 1,000. Uh, uh, the density of the continuous phase will be 1,000. The vis viscosity will be one, so it's water. The fraction, the volume fraction we here is 0 0.01. So is, we have only 1% of organic phase. Uh, the density of this phase is uh, 960, it's very high, uh, according to the, 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 the difference between them is very small, and the, the viscosity is four. We, we'll change after that if you want. Inter, interfacial surf, surface tension is something that you have to look for in the literature or to measure, and uh, Matt measure this, uh, uh, this thing. Uh, and it, in, in his presentation, you, you, and it is our website, you can find it, okay? Okay, so uh, our uh, interfacial surface tension is 0 0.01, and in this case, we use a very strong emulsifier, okay? So it is one. This index of admixture, sometimes you can use in order to calibrate your work. If you are able to measure the drop size, you can calibrate with this number, and after that, to, uh, to uh, com um, no, no, only to update to be sure that it was the model, okay? You take a sample in another stage and you see that it is corresponding to your result, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, uh, we, we, when you have this number correct, it will, it will be uh, uh, okay for every scale, okay? So, okay, so we click okay. 
And now, immediately, we have the drop size. It's 19.3, and 100% of the material pass through the emulsifier to the uh, high shear rate in order to get the results. From now, you can do what you want. It's like you did uh, in every other software. You can do edit. OK, for instance, what will happen if you have a high, high shear, uh, high velocity? OK? So for instance, we have 15,000. OK? So it is completely crazy. OK, well, how, how we do it? Sorry. E edit input. So you have the disperser. OK? And it will be 1,000, 15,000. For instance, only to play with it, okay? It, it's not, it will not be. <laughs> you can take it and fly, okay? But anyway, 15,000. And uh, we click OK. And now uh, it is working again. And now we have 1.87, okay? And every parameter you can change, okay? You can see the last menu. And you can see, for instance, what is the distribution of the drops, okay? You can change the, uh, uh, the admixture uh, value, the surface tension, the concentration. You will get different results. I had a question. Someone asked me, OK, but I want to know at the beginning. I start to do the, to apply the RSD, uh, the, the rotor stator, and I want to see what happened. I don't know why, why, what was the reason, he asked me. And the reason is that when you, are, you fit uh, uh, one minute or uh, 30 seconds or 10 seconds, you will see two, uh, uh, two uh, drop size, different drop size. A big, okay, and after that going to small one, okay? When he see this kind of uh, representation, he was confident that this is good for him and start to work, okay? So some kind of uh, uh, convincement or confidence activity for yourself you can do okay it is okay and it is the way to understand what is the limitations on the limits of the uh, of the models uh, uh, the operation of the software bc mix uh, in different ways is not a problem you, you can feel it now okay uh, during one and a half day we did it is not a problem the problem is how we understand what we get the numbers tell me something so this is something we have to understand once, a second, to apply in the process. We need to understand what is the process. Not the numbers, to understand what is the process. Okay? And when we implement together both of them, we will be able to succeed with our uh, job. It is a tool. Uh, this is what I wanted to do right now. Okay? So I'm sure you want to eat. So bon appetit. Thank you.